What's up, man? Not much. Dude. Just watching some baseball. What you up to, dude? Um, it's been a crazy day. Do um, tell. <laughs> but I figured out TikTok, so I mean, you know, learning something new every day. That's what we're here for, and I know you got a crazy tomorrow. Yeah, dude. I got a. I got a long day tomorrow. One of those six a.m. to six a.m.ers. You know. What time are y'all starting that um, that shoot? I think the shoot starts at one, but I'm gonna be up and getting ready and preparing, you know, all that good stuff. So I wish, um, I wish Emily and I could have made that, but we're not making it to Nashville until Friday morning. Oh, nice. What are y'all coming to Nashville for? So tomorrow's actually Emily's birthday. Sweet. That's awesome. And, um, so we're going to come in there and, and hang out. We're going to go to the palace. Yeah. It's and, um, you know, I don't know if, uh, if you got any shows this weekend, but I see you're quite the dancer now. I, dude, I, I can do a dancing show for you. I don't know. I mean, but no, no shows this weekend, just a lot of writing. So I'm supposed to do a writer's retreat this weekend. So, uh, yeah, every day is accounted for some way. <laughs> well, you know, you're going to be in Charleston um, playing the Windjammer on August 13th. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The Windjammer. And we, uh, <clears throat> and I know, you know, Jerry, we actually went down there to uh, Charleston a couple of months ago and did a writer's, little writer's vacay. And um, I saw the Windjammer. It's freaking awesome. Dude, it's a great spot. And there's been so many big names. I mean, Dirk Spentley, um, Darius Rucker, Colt Ford, um, a lot of Rucker all over the uh, all over the walls there. Yes. Yeah. And if you yeah. get a chance to do uh, Darius Rucker, he's doing uh, his festival now he started a riverfront park in charleston mm -hmm. yeah. um so if you're able to get on that card next year he did it the first one last year and he's doing another one this year um but it's a really great spot um and charleston brings out a lot of people yeah dude charleston's beautiful i was really surprised jerry's been talking about it for years and it's like oh my hometown my hometown my hometown and I'm, you know how everybody kind of talks about their hometown i'm like okay well, it's it's a hometown you know and uh we got there and i was like oh holy shit this place is phenomenal you know, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the fishing was great and the people were great. Um, you know, restaurants, all that. We ate seafood every meal for four days. Yeah, breakfast. Are you a seafood dinner. person? Yeah, I mean, I don't do it in Nashville much. I don't think that's smart. Uh, but yeah, I, I like it when, you know, I'm on the coast, definitely. So how long have you known Jerry? <sighs> Two, three years, something like that. How'd you yeah. meet? Three. It was a mutual friend. Um, this guy, so I bartended in Nashville. I don't know if you knew that. Um, but post COVID, during COVID, I was I was waiting tables and bartending. Um, and one of my coworkers, um, she was dating this guy. We became really good friends. And um, he was a videographer, photographer in town, a really talented guy. And he just liked my music and was trying to help me out. Just like would send my songs to like every person he knew who was a songwriter in town. Yeah. The only guy who responded and actually wrote with me was Jerry Jacobs. <laughs> of like, no joke, 20 people. And uh, Jerry's been like, I think it was probably in February of 2021, maybe. Yeah, it was really early that year. And we wrote a song and <clears throat> it was a decent song. It's a pretty good song. And then um, he produced the crap out of it. And I was like, wow, like this guy is so talented. And uh, then we just wrote, wrote together literally every day because it was COVID and like really everybody was kind of didn't know what they were doing or, or kind of switching things up. And so I knew Jerry wanted to work and I wanted to work and just showed up at his place every day, whether he wanted me to or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, so he um, during COVID, you know, y'all couldn't do anything. And so we were actually open and y'all were still closed. So he was coming down playing shows down here. Yeah. And um, so we would go and we would dance and just hang out. And so he just came up and started talking to us. He was like, hey, I love watching you guys dance. You know, I think you guys are having a great time. Thanks for coming out. And um, so he told me his name and I was like, Jacobs. I was like, are you related to Jeff Jacobs? Because his uncle sold me uh, my first car. Oh, and no so way. he was like, yeah, it's my Uncle Jeff. And um, yeah. so because I knew my mom knew Jacob's family because um, yeah. that's why she called Jeff was because I was looking for a car and she knew he sold cars. So Jerry's dad, Jerry Sr. and my mom actually grew up in the same neighborhood. Um, so they've been friends since they were like six years old. Wow. Wow. OK, cool. And, um, so, yeah, so they're great people and um, good people to have 
you know, traveling the country with you. Man, but, when when we went and we went out a few places, um, you know, he's a celebrity down there. And it's crazy, you know, I was everybody knew Jerry, like everywhere we went. And I was like, dude, like it's great. And I got recognized a couple of times, you know, which is still wild to me. It's really weird. But and I love it. I'm really thankful for that. But like everywhere we went, people were like, Jerry, summer 97. You know, it was like, dude, like you are a rock star in this town. It's it was awesome. so funny to me because um, there was a girl that I actually met. I'm off of TikTok a couple of years ago. Uh, she lives in California. And so she actually, well, actually, you know, you know, Lisa, because she just um, was in, um, she was out with you guys when y'all were filming that project, Flash Mob thing. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. Uh, she's one of the girls at uh, Nashville Palace, right? Yes. Yeah, she's one of yes. The yes. Yeah, she's so awesome. I met her years ago off of TikTok. And so when she came to Charleston, she was like, man, I'm kind of bummed. I'm missing Summer 97 in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Or um, she's my favorite band. I was like, well, who's that? And she goes, Summer 97. I was like, oh, I was like, wow. I was like, that's my buddy Jerry. Man, I was like, wow. And um, so, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, Jerry's very talented, very well known. Uh, my girlfriend's finally starting to join. If you want to say hey to Emily. <laughs> uh, how's it going? What's your name? Bet. What's up? Um, so, yeah, hey. no, he's a, um, he's a he's a good dude. So and, and I'm really glad to see his success. And I'm glad that um, that you guys are able to connect. And obviously, Project is an amazing song. And I think you guys mm -hmm. will throw out lots of good bangers in the future. Let's hope so. I mean, thank you guys for for doing the dance and and the, I'm, I'm, it's it's crazy to me that it took off and and that um, you know I, I had no idea that line dancing was such a huge um, a huge thing. Yeah. I mean, I knew like of line dancing, I knew it existed, but you know I've seen the movie Footloose, but I didn't know to the extent <laughs> that like this thing literally is across the nation, everywhere. Every bar we go to across the country, they play it in every bar. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm seeing that now that I've learned my own dance, you know, <laughs> Everybody, because we were playing, we were playing clubs um, and, you know, we'd show up and, and play these places and people would be doing the dance in the back of the concert, you know, uh, they'd, like it'd be like 12 or 15 people lined up doing the dance, even if the, the club itself wasn't a line dancing bar. And that's when I knew, okay, like people are coming out because they know the song through, through line dancing, which was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you touched on a minute ago about people recognizing you and obviously i saw a TikTok um not too long ago you did where you talked about how you grew up in a double wide um and then i was reading on your website today about you know how you almost gave up music because you didn't have much money and COVID hit and there wasn't much going on um and you were working you know two shifts and all that so can you talk a little bit of that process of going from, you know, not having much to now all of a sudden be not nationally recognized and people are probably calling you an overnight success. But meanwhile, you've put in, you know, all those hard hours um, to get to this point. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, you know, the whole story of everything is, is very complex, to say the least. Um, but I grew up in a very small town in Kentucky where everybody was poor. We just happened to be some of the poorest people in the poor town. <laughs> and uh, it was a single wide trailer, actually, and, I, and it was about to fall down. But, uh, you know, my parents worked very hard and it just happened to be one of those things where we still struggled uh, for most of my life. Um, and then, um, you know, my, my father was an addict. Uh, we lost him 10 years ago. Um, my grandparents took me in just because of you know, a few bad situations and, um, you know, gave me all the love and support that I could have asked for. They were still, you know, didn't have money. I mean, they were still very lower middle class. Like I said, it was a, it was a town where everyone really struggled, but, um, but, you know, at least gave me the love and the curiosity that I needed to chase my dreams and, and kind of instilled that belief in me that, um, there's a bigger world out there if I wanted to go, go after it. So, um, yeah, man, I just, I picked up music when I was, so young, I can't even really remember. I just had, I had a, an instinctual connection to it. And um, it was an escape through hard times, through difficult times. And um, I didn't set out trying to be famous. Um, and I still think that I'm far from that. Thank you for the compliment. But, um, but you know, it's, I would do it if I never made a dime. And, and that's, uh, and I say that with just the most truth, the most authenticity is that like, it's just what I've always done. It's what I did when I literally didn't have a dime. And it's, you know, still what I do when I have a little bit of extra change in my pocket, which is, is nice. Um, but you know, it's, it's just a part of, of 
my day of who I am. And um, so all the hours I spent working, all the hours I spent rehearsing, it didn't feel like work. Although looking back, yeah, I spent easily tens of thousands of hours putting in the work for, for my dream um, of writing songs, practicing singing, uh, the band stuff, traveling. Um, it's all been a very, 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 very long work in progress. And um, thanks to social media, which is an incredible tool for us poor kids, because it is free advertisement for your music. Um, you didn't. A lot of artists seem to understand that, and it yeah. blows my mind because I have friends, you know, here locally and friends that I've met off this app, and I'm just like, why are you not posting every day? It's free advertisement. You never know when something is going to blow up mm -hmm. and people are going to pay attention to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I, I mean, when COVID hit, I was down to my last 11 bucks. Um, I called up my grandma asking her if she had a bed that I could go back home to because I couldn't pay my rent. And um, a buddy of mine found me crying in my car with a check engine light on and asking me what was wrong. And I was trying to get him out of the car because we were having a party at my house and he was half lit. And so I was like, dude, this isn't the time. And um, and he ended up we fought back on it. And he lent me enough money to pay my rent though was that next week I got a job bussing tables. And so I, to, to go back to what you talked about, I, 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 they said, asked me how many shifts I wanted. I said every single one of them. And so I was working double shifts, working 17 hour days, getting three hours of sleep, waking up and go writing with Jerry. And um, that's where we wrote all these songs. You know, I mean, I had a lot of the ideas carved out and then Jerry's just a phenomenal producer and was working on that, that skill and that talent during COVID too. And it just happened to be, man, it's just, it's it's the one relationship in my life where I feel like, you know, it was there's just something bigger I I involved in that. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we see writing songs the same way we see, uh, you know, how they how they're completed the same way. And it's just it's just the best the best friendship, the best, you know, co-workership, whatever you could call it. So um, we create well together. So. Um, yeah, I saved up enough money to record one song. It was a song called Relapse. I posted it on social media and, and it got a little bit of traction in it, you know, and then it led to recording one more and then it led to project. And that's why we're, we're here today. So when, when, when you guys are writing project, do you feel like that one's going to be the hit that could, you know, blow you up or were you more excited about another song at the time? Absolutely not. Like project was the last thing that I thought would be a hit because it had a rap in it. And it, and, it, and there were so many things where that it was just so different. It was so, and, and I played it for some friends. We, we played it for a bunch of our friends and it was like, you know, we don't know what this is. It's cool, but like, it's so left field. I've never heard anything like it. I don't know what, to, I don't, is this, is this country? Is this like, is it rock? Is it hip hop? What is it? And so, you know, I, we got a lot of negative feedback before I released it. And I was like, you know what? Screw what everybody else says. At the time I was independent and I was like, you know, I just want to put out, put it out. Cause I think it's awesome. I think it's cool. I enjoy, I enjoyed writing it. I enjoy what it says. I enjoy listening to it. I'm going to put it out. Blew my mind that it did what it did. I mean, the very first post was the most viral thing that I'd ever had happen to me. And I've been posting videos for years. I've been doing social media for a long time. I've been posting videos of me sitting in it and like all that stuff for 10 years, easy. And like, that was the first like truly viral moment that I'd ever had. And it's just like, and, and that's why like I tell people like, if you're busting your butt and you're posting on social media and you haven't found one yet, just keep trying. Like, even if it takes 10 years, if it's your dream, it's free. All it takes is time. Like make the, make the content, get good at it. And then like, do what you love. And uh, it couldn't be more true for me, and I and I and I'm just so freaking grateful because I, I know at the end of the day it's still a lot of luck, and so I know we're both very fortunate. Yeah. Now, when that pops off and you see what people are responding to now moving forward, what do you take from project? You see, like, what do you see the people took from that? Do you try and incorporate that towards you know future songs? Yeah. Well, I think what happened that day is we stumbled upon a sound um that was that was me you know i think i think every artist um you know has a time has a time period where they just experiment with a lot of different things until they find out what makes them them and um you know and and that was tough for me because i would go into to a room and it's like you know before i met jerry it was like well what's your sound what's well, like i'm a little bit rock and roll i'm a little bit country and i i like it how do you describe that to someone and, um, you know, someone who's creating some of the sounds, some of the tracks and it's like, you know, 
And at the time, I was using very spiritual language to communicate what kind of music I liked. Whereas Jerry is very mathematical. Jerry is very two plus two equals four because he has a lot of musical training. He has a, a music degree. That's something I don't have. You know, it's, music was something that I just always heard by ear. And, you know, Jerry definitely has that spiritual part of him musically as well. I think that's why we communicate so well. But, um, but yeah, he just seemed to get it. You know, when I was like, I'm a little bit rock and roll, I'm a little bit country, I'm a little hip, bit hip hop. And he was like, cool, me too. And then we just started making stuff that we liked. And we weren't worried about what was popular. We weren't worried about what was working. We were just like, let's make songs that we think are cool. And so that's what we did. And when we made projects, we were like, I think we have something cool here that feels like me. And it also, you know, features a part of my voice that, you know, is unique. The lower part of my voice. I grew up listening to Josh Turner and, you know, Trace Atkins. And, and my like yeah. Hey, actually, uh, your man was the first video that ever um, sound I ever used to blow me up on TikTok. Really? Dude. Mm -hmm. In my hometown, they would have called me like the Josh Turner impersonator because before I turned 16, 17, that's all I sang was Josh Turner songs. So that's funny, man. That's crazy. There's not many guys who really do. I mean, the only guys I can think of off the top of my head are, you know, Sky McCreary and Josh Turner who do have that, you know, kind of deep voice. Yeah, well, there's my, my, my grandpa was a bass singer in a gospel quartet. So um, when I was growing up, I was just fascinated, you know, with his voice. He was to me, he was the best singer I'd ever heard. So I just love that. When you were a kid, did you want to be a singer right off the bat or did you start off playing a guitar and want to play guitar at first? Um, I always sang. I was never good at it, <laughs> I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't sing. So if, 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 if you could sing from the beginning and now you're pretty good, maybe there's still less hope for me. Can you give me a few tips? I'll, I'll give you some dancing tips. If you want to give me some tips. I definitely need some dancing tips. I think what I'm, I need to learn is the, is the swag part of it. Uh, dude, what blew my mind? So how long, how long have you known Jerry? Just question. Uh, since COVID personally, yeah. Okay, so yeah, for three you. years now. Did you know that he was on his high school step team? No, he can, so, he can dance. He can dance is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like he's really good. Well, see, because he actually played. Um, because after I met him, I was because the range of him. Because what blew me away with Jerry is when he sang "Redneck Woman," and I have never heard a man <laughs> sing "Redneck Woman" so good. And mind you, you know, we're at a bar on Wednesday afternoon, and Jerry is just belting "Redneck Woman" in this bar, and I, and he's up there all by himself playing guitar, and I was like. Good Lord, this dude is, I was like, who is this guy? And um, so, yeah, so I started talking to my friends because I was like, dude, I was like, I just saw this guy, Jared. It's like, he's incredible. He's got charisma, got a good look about him. And so I started telling some of my, and my family and friends were like, oh, yeah, no, I played with him at, at the church, you know, um, growing up. And so I knew that about him. I didn't know. Yeah, dude, no, he's actually really good. Really good. Um, okay. I mean, I mean. So if you've seen his show, you've seen a little bit of it. But dude, he has a little bit of Timberlake in him. Yeah, it, it, it shock, it'll shock you. And so when I, I say that, like, to when I was learning the line dance, <laughs> I was like, I was like, dude, I've got like, I've got like forty eight hours to learn this line dance. Like, here we go, we're gonna do this video. And I was like, this is what I've learned so far. He was like, dude, you're way too boxy right now. You you look <laughs> you look so nerdy right now. He's like, first of all, like loosen your shoulders a bit, like do this. And I was like, okay, all right, cool. And no joke, within like 30 seconds, I looked so much cooler. It was like um, it was like that scene in the movie Hitch with Will Smith, where like he's teaching the guy how to dance. He's like, hey man, you're right here. Don't, don't leave right here. Don't like, need any of pizza. Don't need any Q-tips. <laughs> it helped a ton. It helped a ton. Yeah. That's awesome, oh. dude. <laughs> So I just saw you played for Nelly. Was that your first time meeting him, or how'd that come about? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we got the shows back in uh, like December, or January last year. And I remember when um, when my team texted me and told me that, like I just like spit out my drink. I was like, "Are you serious? We're opening up for Nelly?" And uh, yeah, and they were like, "Not only are you opening up for Nelly, you're opening. You have like a whole week of shows with them." And I was like, "Oh my god!" Like. That's incredible. So yeah, it was it was it was so much fun, dude. His his fans like were so good to us, and um, you know you, you go into that like wondering is that gonna work because you know he's a hip hop artist, but he has so many country hits. Like he's he was the first hip hop artist to do I think a country crossover, and that was um, the Tim McGraw over and over again song. Yeah, I um, heard that one. Oh, dude, it was like I can't. Remember. I mean, we were probably. 
second or third grade, like maybe even younger than that, like when that song came out. But it was like the only song on the radio for months, maybe a year. <laughs> and um, and then he had the cruise uh, feature, and then he's done a bunch since then too. I mean, just a, a bunch of country stuff. A lot of his set, he does it too. A lot of, he does a lot of his country features. Is he the one that did Little Bit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I was like, because that's a big line dancing song everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that one, but he does that at his shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm curious. So whenever project you said it went viral from the top, when did it start becoming? You start seeing people line dance to it. You start getting tagged in that. First thing I saw was uh, Queen Bee's video. She posted a video. I don't know how soon it was. I mean, things were happening so fast. Actually, at the time that it that project released, I was down in Alabama for a couple of days. And so I was like doing all of like, the, I was on my phone the whole time I was at the beach. And like I had a couple of days off work and like I did not enjoy the beach at all because all I was doing was like responding to comments. I was like, you know, checking where we were on the iTunes charts. I was like, we're still number one, we're still, you know. And it was a crazy, crazy week. And um, so I, I don't remember necessarily like when, when I saw it, but that was the first video I saw. And and I it, and it went viral. I mean, it was, I, th I think it, it was, it might've been just as viral as the, as the original video itself. And, and it might've been a couple months later, I can't remember, but, but soon after that, I just saw it more and more like, you know, other people doing it. And then it would be people, it might be 20 people at a time dancing in a club. And I was like, man, this is really taking, taking off in this line dancing community. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I just, I, I never, never expected that. So pretty crazy. I think it's cool that you've embraced it as much as you have, because yeah. there have been a lot of songs that have blown up because of line dancing. By the way, <laughs> thanks for the gifts. I don't know if somebody sent you a gift too. I don't know if you want to say thank you for that, because they are sending you cash. Earlier, earlier I, I, saw a, uh, I saw a cowboy hat on my, on my head. As I was like trying to figure everything out, I was like, this is perfect timing. <laughs> Have you done a live before? The, dude, I, I, I've tried, but like never this long, like 30 seconds. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm getting off. <laughs> they're sending you, if you see emojis, they're sending you gifts, which yeah. equals cool. cash. If you, oh. There are people who apparently make careers off of, oh, it, this. there's another gift. Uh, this is yeah. their job is doing live and making gifts. So yeah. it's, a, it's very interesting. Um, but I really haven't seen anybody embrace the line dancing community as much as you have, which mm -hmm. I think is awesome. And I'm glad that you have appreciated, you know, people who are going up and requesting your song and want to dance to it and posting videos. of it. I think it's great. Yeah, well, thanks, man. I, I mean, um, I've had fun. I really have. You know, uh, we did the little um, uh, flash mob in Nashville. And then uh, tomorrow we're doing something really cool. You know, we're shooting uh, shoot another video. So, you know, I can't really say much on that yet, but I think it's gonna be awesome. So, um, yeah, I, I've had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun learning it. I don't know any other line dances yet, but um, but I would be totally be down to. Good news is once you learn one, the rest will yeah. come a lot yeah. easier. Yeah, dude. Um, because some of the some of the uh, the phrases that y'all used to describe the steps, I didn't understand. But then like Jerry like explained it to me in, in music terms, and it made sense. Like one of them's like a triplet. You call like a, a move a triplet, and I didn't know. I had no idea what that means. And he's like, No, you got to think of it. Triplet, triplet. It's like a, it's. And when I thought of it in a musical term, I was like, Oh yeah, easy. And boom, I got it immediately. So I was like, If they're all like this, I'll figure it out. I jokingly tell my dance instructor all the time. I was like, every dance, there's a triple step in, in every single dance. So mm -hmm. that's basically all dancing is. Gotcha. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and I really like music. Like, if you know rhythm and you have, a t like, an ear for music, you have an ear for dance. Gotcha. gotcha. It's just a different, it's different wording. So, like, if you, if you listen to your song and you can count out, like, every time you have a da 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 or like a one and or whatever when you can hear it in your song nine times out of ten once you like know know a step you're gonna do that step on that moment in anything yeah. gotcha <laughs> yeah <It's> crazy <laughs> so do you have a uh, a weird place you've been recognized yet a weird place i've been recognized yeah like you know you're chilling by the, on the beach or something and somebody recognizes you're you're just grocery shopping and somebody says hey aren't you chase mcdaniel Man, I was uh, I was at Kroger um, 
this was a this was a while back. This is probably six months ago, and one of my songs was playing over the speakers at Kroger, and I was in the um, I was in the uh, like the fruit section or whatever, and a lady came up to me. She's like, I don't mean to bug you, but like, I know this song, and I think you're the person who sings it. And it was just like really cool. And I was like, yeah, it, it is, it is me, you know. And it was, but it was also like she was unsure because like she had only seen me a couple times, and she's like, I just want to tell you like I love it a lot, and she's, you know. But it, yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. So, yeah. So this is gonna be your second time coming to Charleston when you play the Windjammer in, in Bob yeah. Club Day. Yeah, second time. Um, yeah, I, I wish I could stay as long as the first time. I mean, like I said, you, it's an awesome town. Yeah. Well, we're excited. We'll finally get to meet in person. Um, Jerry's, uh, you know, giving us some tickets. I'm very thankful for that. Sweet. Yeah, that's going to be great, man. And it's August 13th. I don't even know when it is. Yeah. 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 I know. You, you, yeah, you have a lot yeah. of, um, well, because the Windjammer, dude, they pack out. Like, that place Every is time. one of the best places to play Every in Charleston. They, uh, like, I mean, I know they're going to love you, but it, it doesn't matter who they have there. Like, because I didn't hear any advertisement for it, but they, I mean, it, it's just that crowd is hot. They're packed. Yeah. They love it. It's just, it's a, it's a great time. And they're you'll have a blast. always a fun time. Yeah. It's great. That's great. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I was there and I saw some plaques on the wall of uh, Sister Hazel. Mm -hmm. And um, my high school girlfriend, her uncle was the guitar player and Sister Hazel. And I was like, oh, sick. That's awesome. I don't know. Just like, something that I saw. <laughs> that was like the first time, like, like I remember dating her and then I met him and I was like, oh, you can be a rock star for a living. You know? <laughs> like, maybe I'm going to keep working at it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, do you have any questions for Chase? No, I think you covered all of them. Mm, okay. <laughs> I think I got, I think that's all I had for you. <laughs> well, thanks for teaching me how to do TikTok. I'm sorry that it took me so long to figure it out. Okay, totally well, we'll fine. do this again next time. You Well, yeah. now Ashley just joined because we were supposed to start at 730. Um, but I know you had you were busy, so we'd push back a couple hours. So my friend Ashley, she's very excited. She goes, oh, my gosh. Hi, Don. Hi, Chase. <laughs> well, hi, Ashley. How's it going? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah she, and I had the amount know. of friends that I had that, like, were at Tortuga. I'm from South Florida. So the amount of friends mm -hmm. I had that were at Tortuga that were like, oh, my God, he's going to be on your show. I met him at Tortuga. I faced up my mom with him at Tortuga. <laughs> it was just like oh, the amount of people that like genuinely, uh, you probably like see it in your comments all the time, but like the amount of people that I personally know in the line dance world and that have been to your concerts and whatnot that are like, that guy's awesome. Like he's amazing. Like that genuinely just love you just for like <laughs> your songs is insane. <laughs> that's, that's so nice. And thanks for saying that. But it's you know, awesome. you you never yeah, know, because like, because it is a, it is a song that could definitely be misconstrued. So the fact that people are saying that is really nice, you know. Yeah. You never know. Somebody's gonna be saying, "Well, that's the guy who's who's that big jerk guy." You know, we all hate him. You know, it's they love breaking girls' hearts. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is. I mean, even when like your song blew up and it became like a thing in the line dance world and everybody wanted to learn the dance, whatever. I just remember like we would just be at the bar and me and all my friends would just be like screaming the song at each other, like <laughs> dancing. And I was like, I was like, this is such a mood. Like, I was like, I don't know why, but this song just really hits different than any other song. Fantastic. Hey, I, I, well, so the day that we wrote it, um, Jerry pulled up a track as producers do. And like we, I think we've been messing with a couple of like, what was it like guarding our attention? And like, if, you know, so Jerry and I have two, two different mental illnesses. He has ADHD and I have OCD. And so together, together we feel like they work really well together in a, in a creative space. Um, and so he'll just kind of jump from one thing to another and he'll be doing six things at once. Whereas I'm trying to perfect one thing to like where it can't get, you know, can't get any more crazy. Um, you know, in terms of like being right on. And so he's just pulling up a bunch of tracks and he's like, I don't know what this is. It just says project. And I'm like, project. And I just kind of said that with my wheels turn for a second. And he's like, I'm just going to click on it. I said, we should write a song called project. And he's like, no, that's just the default name for a file <laughs> and logic when you don't name it. And I said, no, I, I want to write a song called Project. I was like, and I've, and like, I just kind of started spitting out some stuff. And he's like, he's like, oh, okay. And he's like, well, I, I, I didn't mean for that to be a song title. He's like, really, I just, this is just like what the computer saves it as. And then he pulls it up and like the original, the original beat, like, which is the song, 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 was like, it was that. 
And we just kind of started spitballing. Baby, I'm a project. Love and he's a mist. And it literally was born by accident. But we said all the things I we mean, wanted to say. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. No, <laughs> we might start dancing. <laughs> but yeah, it was. Um, and that's one of those days where you're like, you know, I was working, like I said, double shifts at the time, trying to make enough money to get by, save up to record a song and getting such little sleep and walking in the room, didn't even have a song idea, but we just showed up to work, you know? And I think that's like, that's something that I've learned is so true is like, always show up, always try to write. Even when you don't have something that you want to say that day, it might fall out of the sky and it might be the best thing that ever happened to you. You just got to leave yourself open to that creative space. And sometimes it will change your life, which has been true for us. So just grateful that everybody's dancing to it. It's been amazing. Uh, last question I do have for you. How have you handled all the attention now? And, you know, you play a show and everybody's wanting to come up and take a picture with you. And I'm sure you, you know, maybe some old friends from high school are, you know, want to talk to you again. Maybe some old relatives you didn't know that, you know, <laughs> now showing up. Um, you know, how do you stay grounded um, now receiving all the attention? Man, honestly, I love it. Like, and, and I don't mean that I love the attention part. I mean that I love, I love the interactions. Um, because you know what I set out to do and what isn't fully, um, you don't see the full spectrum with just the song project, but you see it. I think when you listen to some of my other songs like daughter and I have a few unreleased songs that I also wrote with Jerry, like somebody like me a song called therapy is that my whole mission and, and part of all this is, is to, is to shine a light on mental health. Um, you know, I lost my father to suicide 10 years ago after he struggled with addiction for 17 years. I've struggled with suicidal thoughts and depression, and anxiety since I was 12 years old. Um, and so my whole mission and path in music is to write songs and to make music both that make people dance, get them out of their heads and have a great time. And then also to shine a light on some more of the darker things that we go through. And, uh, and I think what's great about that is that I'm, I'm just trying to, to do a balancing act on bringing the party to people and then also providing a space where they can listen to a song when they really want to feel something, uh, feel something deeper than that. And, um, you know, so if you come to my shows, you, you experience both sides of that, of those, those uh, mountains and valleys. So. And so what I love about those interactions is I get to hear people's stories and I get to hear about how they relate to the songs. I get to hear about um, their own experiences in life, both the good and the bad, and how the music has helped them. And if it's the worst show in the world and I'm just like walking off with my head down and like, I just, I feel like I sang poorly or, you know, we weren't as tight as we should have been. Like that can happen. And then I hear someone say, your song saved my life tonight. Totally changes my mood. Like, I mean, it just, uh, there's nothing that that's why we're doing it. Like it's at the end of the day, it's, it's not about them. It is about the music, but it's not about the music. It's about the impact that the music has the potential to make in people's lives. It's music is, has the potential to create positive change. And it did that for me, and I just hope that I can make music that does that for somebody else. So uh, the biggest thing is, is that I can't sleep after a show. <laughs> That's Because I'm thinking about every single person that I've met, every single soul that like I've interacted with, and I just can't shut it off. And uh, you know, I'm trying to find a way to, to get sleep. But other than that, man, it's just there's there's nothing that I could do in the whole world and be this happy. So it's been nothing but amazing. Love that you're doing that. I'm curious though. So when you were younger, you said you struggled with suicidal thoughts. Um, did, did you see a therapist for that? Because me personally, I think that's a great thing for people to do is to see a therapist and ha just have somebody else to kind of help manage life because it can be really stressful. Absolutely. Um, so I've been seeing one for six years now. Um, his name is Ryan and he's incredible. I won't say his last name because I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. But um, <laughs> So I grew up in a very small town, though, where that was I, I never even heard of that. You know, uh, I think the stigma around it, too, was um, that was for people who, you know, to, for lack of a better word, uh, were, were crazy. And that's just not the case at all. But that was what I thought. I thought, well, to see a therapist, you must really, you know, be off your rocker. And um, but, you know, that's. That's, that couldn't be further from the truth because uh, there was a time when I needed I needed hope more than anything, and um, and I saw three or four before I found the one that I've now seen for over half a decade. But um, um, you can see a therapist for grief. You can see a therapist for a number a number of issues, and I think I think depression and anxiety are all. Um, 
you know, an overload of those, that small spectrum of emotions that we experience, but then they bottle up, bottle up, bottle up. And then you have this experience that you just can't even explain to somebody if you tried. Um, but it can really help you unravel those things and, and live a higher quality of life. So well, I, think, I think a big thing for people is to understand that it's okay to not be okay. You know, life is not always yeah. going to be perfect. Um, we're going to go through seasons of life, um, you know, whether it's a personal thing or I don't know, sometimes a chemical imbalance, like there are things that just happen to you in life and you just have to learn to mm -hmm. take them on. And um, it is good to have someone, you know, who's knowledgeable that you can talk to about those things. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, there was definitely a time in my life where um, I, I didn't care whether it was okay to not be okay or not. I just wasn't okay, regardless of whether that was okay or not. And, um, but, but I think as guys, you know, it starts from the time that we're so young that the, the mentality of being tough. And so um, uh, being honest about what you might be feeling feels scary because it, it seems as if it might damage your reputation. Um, and, but what I found is, is that there is the truest strength is in vulnerability. The truest strength is in being honest and then remaining, uh, and then navigating through that and then finding a way to be grounded in some of those, those deeper things. Um, so yeah, I think, um, you know, learning all this and then writing these songs is just, um, helping me to connect to people in a way that hopefully, uh, can create positive impact in our culture and in our genre of music. Besides songwriting, what else helps you stay grounded um, to kind of find you in your happy place? I think routine uh, helps me a lot. Uh, thank you for the cowboy hat. This is a perfect time. <laughs> That's a good look for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is this Next week, we're going to see Chase on stage with a cowboy <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It's a vibe. Maybe I should have, I should, you know, should have worn a cowboy all the time. <laughs> Um, but you know, I've, I, you know, I wake up in the morning, I go to the gym every morning. I try to get a walk in, uh, at least even if I can't, you know, get up my heart rate to do the crazier stuff, at least go for a walk and, 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 and you know, then I go right typically. And then, and I have kind of a stable, a stable routine. Also something that's helped me a lot is, you know, is meditation and, um, taking, you know, vitamin D supplements and, and just the basic getting, getting the right amount of sleep. Um, there's a few basic things like five basic elements that it, really anybody can do that are essentially free. Um, and that's sleeping the same amount as you normally would. Thank you again for the cowboy hat, Aaron. Um, you know, <laughs> drinking plenty of water, making sure your vitamin D is at the, at a, at a good level, uh, eating not pizza rolls and grilled cheeses for every meal. Um, I and a big role in society. <laughs> keeping yourself happy. So even if sugar people eat at night and not sleep if you eat sugar um, during the day and at night. And those aren't, those aren't for sure fixes. They're not quick fixes. They're not going to save your life, but it's just things that you can do to, t to be proactive. And, and like, they're the first things that you can do. Um, you know, especially if you experience stuff like seasonal, seasonal affective disorder. Um, and there's, you know, there's, there's a ton of things that I've learned, but I won't bore everybody with that. So it's different for everyone. <laughs> King of sleep, we need some sleep tomorrow. It is Emily's birthday, and I know you need yeah. some sleep. You have a long next few weeks, I'm sure, with all the touring. Um, when is your next show, if you want to tell everybody, because I will publish this tomorrow. So if you want to say your next uh, few stops, or if you know them off the top of your head. <laughs> I, really, I really wish I knew, man. I really wish I knew where I was playing next. <laughs> you got people for that now. <laughs> yeah, I know we're playing. It's, we're not playing this weekend, because I'm, I'm at a writer's retreat this weekend. But next weekend... Uh, we're playing Tidal Wave Festival. I know which is in New Jersey. That's all I know. I, I know we're playing two or three other places after that same weekend, but I don't know where they are. In Charleston on the 13th. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yes. So Charleston. And you'll be meeting us. Yeah. Yes. And if you need some dancers for a project while you're on stage, just let us know. We'll hop up there and do the, do the dance. Perfect. We'll do the dance together. We'll get a great video of it. It's going to be fun. Oh. Uh, I'd go mega viral for sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, thank you for joining us, Chase. It's very nice to meet you. Obviously, Jerry has told me great things about you. Um, you know, I'm really excited that you know he's having success with you. Um, I think it's incredible. He's a good dude. Um, you seem like a great guy. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited to meet you. I think mm -hmm. we both are. 
Yeah, it was nice to hear like about stuff about you because it makes it makes a difference with writers and artists. Yeah. Some that you connect to differently, their whole heart and soul into their music compared to others. Yeah, and it makes it easy to root mm -hmm. for a guy like you. And every time you know now a project comes on, people are going to hear your story, and mm -hmm. obviously us now too. We're gonna you know, want to support you even more, and it's gonna mean much more to us also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it means it means a lot to me. Thank you guys, and thanks for thanks for the opportunity to get on your show. Thanks for dancing to the song, and and thanks for giving me your platform. I really appreciate it. But anytime, we'll be in touch soon. Sounds good, guys. Have a, have a good one. Happy birthday! Hit the power button, the top right corner, to, to end, <laughs> end live. So. You got it. You got it. All right, we'll talk soon. Happy birthday, by the way. See y'all. Thank you. Bye.